Hi guys, it's Feather here, back with a new video. Uh, today I'm going to go over the lounging lion pattern and show you how to put the mane aside the head. It's a pretty simple pattern, but there were some steps were a little bit awkward to explain and taking photos just did them no justice, so today I'm going to walk you through it on the camera. I'll just give the body a quick mention, as it's, it's a very simple part of the pattern and I don't think it needs much going over, as it's just a simple close shape that you're going to sew all the way around. For turning it, you just want to snip a little neck hole in the top, as the head's going to be there anyway, so it'll all be covered up when you're done. The fiddliest bit is definitely that inner leg seam, as it's quite a tight turn. I recommend leaving a good seam allowance around those legs, and don't try trimming up in the leg seam until you've sewn it. It's very fiddly and it'd be easy to slip out of that joint, so just take it slow and don't trim it until you're done. Okay, so onto the main event. We have the front face pattern piece, the back I'll be cutting out in a minute, and the main pieces, and we have the back piece, and then three front pieces. For Stephen's Lion, I use Shannon Smooth Cuddle in Paris Pink, Shannon Shaggy Cuddle in Baby Pink, and I'll put the shade of Moon Thread that I use in the description because it is perfect, but I just can't remember the code right now. Okay, so let's get on with the making of Lion. I've cut out both my face pieces, and I'm going to start by folding the front piece down the middle, and I'm going to sew down the forehead, and then down the chip. I always mark which side is going to make the centre line on the back of the head, so I know which way around they are, and I'm going to sew down this curve too. Okay, so now both halves are ready to sew. I'm just going to sew these up and then show you how to do the mate. Okay, we're back. For this next step, you just want the front head piece and the three triangle main pieces. These front pieces are going to be inserted into the seam that connects the front of the head to the back. We'll take the top main piece, and if we're using fur, you need to make sure it's neat and running smooth. We'll fold it in half vertically with wrong sides together so that we can mark the centre. I keep a clean brush in my toolbox for working with fur. We can use it to brush out stray hairs and make sure as little of it as possible is going to get trapped in those seams when we brush it out of the way. Now that we've got the centre point, we just want to line that up with the centre seam on the forehead. We're going to pin the main pieces along the edges of the face, right sides together. I'll leave this one on regular speed so you can see what I'm doing. To repeat this with the side pieces, I'm overlapping them a little bit just so there's no bald spots on my entire line later. The ends of the mane and face should line up, but don't worry if the mane's a little bit longer, because it's, it's normal, especially if you're going to be using a stretchy and slippery fabric like the Shaggy Minky. And we're all pinned! Hopefully this is a lot clearer in the video than it was trying to get photos of this. We're going to stitch around the entire head. For this one I like to use a long stitch so that I can do any unpicking or tease any trapped hair before continuing with the rest of the head. So on to more sewing! Okay, as you can see I've sewn all the way around the head, keeping the stitches visible. And if I turn him round we'll see the mane is starting to take shape. I give a little bit of a brush just to make sure the seam is nice and clean and that his hairline is neat. And then I'll smooth it down, ready for the next step. 
We're going to grab the back of the head now and pin that to the front and sandwich the mane in between. If you've worked with any of my patterns or you've been looking at my Patreon, you'll know that by now I favour starting from the middle. So I'm going to line the seams up, pin there and go outwards from there, pinning all the way around. So we're going to follow that first seam all the way around again, stitching down all three layers this time, so I'll see you on the other side. Now I've sewn the head together, I'm going to turn his head out so you can see how the mane is going to sit in the seams. The back of his head will be hidden in the mane, but I'm going to put it in anyway to help shape his head and give it support. The mane tends to look best when it's empty or just lightly stuffed, so for going the back of his head would make his head look weird when you try to stuff it. So laying him out flat, you can see the shape, and we're going to start adding the back of the mane now. This is another fiddly bit that's kind of hard to explain in photographs alone, so I'm hoping the video is going to help. I'm going to take the back mane piece and put it over the face like this, and line up those points. The brush is going to make a return for this step, This time we're going to be sewing fur on fur, so I want to make sure that I can see my edges and that the fur is all out of the way. If it's all messy it's going to get caught in the seams, we're going to have to spend hours picking it back out, it'll be a nightmare. So brushing it now is going to avoid all of that. After brushing, I press down on the seams with my fingers and start rolling the fur down out of the way and then I'll repeat that on the matching side. Because it's such a fiddly shape and there's just so much fur, I tend to just do one line at a time. It's a slow and steady process, but it's much easier to do six lines than rather than try and pin the whole thing at once. As I go I keep pushing the fur back, making sure that it's all as far out away from the seam as I can get it. Okay, so now that side's pinned, I'll sew that bit, and then pin the next side, sew it, pin the next side, sew it, and so on and so forth until we go all the way around the lion's head. When you do your seams, you might notice that fur is getting trapped in there. What you want to do is take the seam, hold it tightly against your finger, and then take a pin and gently tug out a little tiny bit at a time. I promise you it'll look a lot better if you do it. Now that we've done one side, we'll move on to the next. Fold the fur inwards again and push as much of it into the seam as possible. We'll just repeat these last steps until all the main tufts are done. Yay, we're all sewn! The head's hiding inside the mane, so let's go and turn it out. You can see that I open up the mane, not the head, and just turn that, and the head will pop out just fine. All 
pretty. Ready for the next step. I normally leave the darts in the back of the head until later, as it's hard enough sewing extra fur without all the extra seams and curves in the way. Well that's all for now. There'll be more line related goodness coming at a later date, but this just seemed to be one of those things people had a rough time with. If this isn't something you want to do, you can make the head and the mane separately, and then after you've stuffed the head, pin the mane on and hand sew it on. Both versions work perfectly well, but I just prefer projects with minimal hand sewing, so this is my favourite way to do it. If you have any questions, or you need any help with the pattern or with the video today, please don't hesitate to get in touch, and I'll see you next time. Bye!